So we all know what safety is. Uh, we have worked in companies. Um, we have worked in sensitive areas, and uh, we know what safety means. Safety comes from the word safe. Yeah. So you have to be properly dressed. That is uh, one thing that comes to mind when you talk about this thing safety. So when we say safety, what do we mean? Now, when we say safety, the first thing that comes to mind is you have the right attire, right? You have the right cap. You have, your, you have the right boots. You have everything right in your life. Amen? The Bible, the Bible calls it the armor of God. Now, the armor of God is our safety as the children of God. Now, the armor of God, Paul talks about it in, um, in Ephesians 6. Um, I think it's verse 10. It says that, let, let us go and look at it. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 and 10. Let us start from 10. The Bible says that finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, that is where our safety is. That is the first point, where we get our safety as the children of God. Um, the, the Apostle Paul exhausts his brothers. He says that they should be strong in the Lord. We are not strong in ourselves. In ourselves we have nothing to be strong about. Because the Bible tells us so well that we are weak in ourselves. Amen? Amen. The Bible also somewhere tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It means that in ourselves we have no power to do anything. Yeah, so we depend on God. We depend on God so that he can do these things in our lives. Now that is where our safety lies. Our safety lies in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? So, the person I would focus us to is the Lord Jesus. Because he's our safety. He's our strength. He's our joy. Amen? Amen? The Bible says that all the fullness of God dwelt in him. Now he's like a strong tower. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run unto it and they are safe. Amen? Amen? Now the Bible is very clear on that is that the name of the Lord, who is Jesus. Now, the person who was revealed to that word had not seen, seen him in person. But um, that was in the Old Testament, that is. But in the New Testament, that person, the name which we are to call upon, who is Jesus Christ, revealed himself. Now, this is how he calls it. He calls him a strong tower. Now, a strong tower is used when you talk about war, when you talk about fighting, when you talk about a battle. Now, a strong tower is like, um, the Bible uses the word stronghold in many ways, or in many aspects. It says it's a stronghold. Now, that is where you put your strong armor. That's where your strength is. Amen? Now, as a child of God, where is your strength? Do you depend upon yourself? Do you depend upon your account? Some people have their strength in such places. Do you depend upon your spouse, your friend, your siblings, your job? That is where some people put their safety. But as a child of God, I would advise us, I would exhort us that we put our safety in Christ Jesus. That is the name that is above every other name. Amen? Now I think of a certain character, it's called David. When David came into um, a battle with a Philistine, his name is Goliath. He says that, I come to you not with what I carry, that is the sword. And by that I don't mean that the sword is wrong to carry. I don't mean that money is wrong, but we should not put our trust in it. That is not where our safety is. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that some trust in chariots, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. Amen? That is where our safety is. The Bible says that we call upon him. Amen? Amen? Now and we shall be saved. So that safety which I'm talking about is first in the name of God. Now the name of God is our safest place. Amen? Now when you are in a situation, 
any situation, now the first thing you should do is call upon the name of God. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us that he is faithful. He cannot lie. He has given us a promise that call unto me. Amen? Amen? And then he will answer us. So that is the first place I would advise us to be safe in the name of God. The name of God is so powerful. You can imagine at the mention of his name, demons flee. Now that is a very safe place. When you call upon his name, there is salvation. Now in that name, there is salvation, there is deliverance, there is our needs met. Still in that name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Then my Bible tells me that every principality must bow to that name. How safe is that name? That name is very safe. Amen? And you can lean on that name because it is so safe for us. Amen? Amen. Now, there is this person called Job. Job puts it in a, in a simpler way. He says in Job 5 and 11, he says that Job chapter 5 and verse 11, Job 5 and 11. Job 5 and 11, it says, To set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. Amen? Amen. Now, Job tells us that those that are on high, now those are the people who are proud, um, the people that put their trust on something else, the people that put their trust on something that is different. Now, he says that those that are on high, the proud people, they that, are, they that speak vanity, they that speak proudly against our God. He says that, that they shall be brought low. Now what comes to mind is that Job wants us to know that in humility they saved. Amen? Amen? Now when someone is humble, then he's in a safe place. My Bible tells me that the, the face of the Lord is against they that are proud. Now for us or for you being proud, is like calling for war with God. Now he will not fight for you, but he will fight against you. Now, to do what? To humble you. Because the Bible says that for the humble, he will exalt them. Now, to a place of exaltation, that is a place of safety. I know everyone, every one of us would bear with me with witness that it is good to, feel in the, to be in a safe place, to be in a high place. Let's say at your workplace, you'll be in a higher position. Let's say you are a boss or a supervisor. Now that is a safe place. Yeah? So promotion is a safe place. And Job tells us that that is what the Lord will do. He says that he set up on high those that below. He will exalt them. Amen? Now what is the secret to being exalted? How can we be saved? You be humble. Amen? Humility pays is what he's trying to tell us. That humility pays. Now, humility is a condition of the heart. As we all know, it is a condition of the mind, it is a condition of the heart. And then it will translate into your words and then into your action. So, to be humble in our minds, what should we do? The writer of Lamentation and verse 3, chapter 3, he says that I thought on those things. Amen? Amen. Let us look at it. Lamentations chapter 3. Um, let us start from verse 18. Lamentations 3 and 18. It says, and I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Now this, uh, this is a scenario where someone is going through a tough time. Yeah? So he goes on and says, remembering my affliction 
and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul has them still in remembrance and is humble in me. Amen. Amen. Now that is another um, criteria to a humble, a humble mind. He says that his soul has them in remembrance. Now, remembering what God has done for you will keep you humble. Amen? Amen. You will be in a, a praise mode each and every, day, every time. You want to praise him each and every day. And the more you praise him, the more you will recognize his work in your life. Then you are going to be humble. You cannot dare be, pride, be proud when you are always in remembrance of what God has done for you. So, Humility is a place of safety. The, um, the right of lamentations tells us that he puts them in remembrance and then he is humble. So how can your mind be humble? Always remember what God has done for you. Remember his word. The Bible tells us in a, in, a, in, a, in a certain way, the Bible calls it meditation. You meditate upon God's word. Amen? Amen. He says that uh, in Joshua 1 and it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Now that's another aspect. From your mind, it must come to your lips. You must confess it. The moment you confess it, you release it into the atmosphere. So Job tells us that, for, uh, the right of lamentation tells us that for your mind to be humble, then you must remember what God has done for you. You must, you must remember where he's taken you from. And that is what our God did with the children of Israel. He would give them commandments, like the fourth commandment. He says, remember the, the Sabbath. So, my focus is on that word, remember. It means human beings are prone to forgetting. Now, God can do such a wonderful thing in your life, but you can, you can forget about it. Now, it is human and natural to forget, but the Bible gives us a remedy not to forget. How do you do it? You remember or you rehearse. The Bible uses another word, you rehearse it. You say it over and over again, you confess it each and every time. And then you're going to stay humble. Yeah? Confess it, you remember it, and then you're going to stay humble. And then you're going to be in a safe place. Now that safe place is called peace, in another word. It is called shalom. Amen? So, if you want to be at peace, as a child of God, if you want to be saved, then you must be humble. Amen? Amen. Now he goes on and says, those which mourn may be exalted. He uses that word mourn. Now we usually know that people mourn when they, they are in grief. But what Job is telling us in that place, Mourning is another form of something in the Bible we call fasting. Amen? When someone is fasting, he mourns. The rite of lamentation touches on the same thing. He says, girl and wormwood. When we speak about these things, we are talking about someone who is in grief. Now, when you are fasting, the body is in grief. It doesn't get the nutrients it wants. You are denying it of what it wants, what it likes. Now, Denying the flesh what it wants will keep you humbled in God. Amen? Amen? And that is another secret to be in safety, to be in peace. Amen? So, as you fast, as you engage in a fast, as you train yourself to do a fast, as you seek God to give you that grace, to always be in a fasting mode, then the Bible says, that is where your exhortation will come from. Amen? Amen. Now, it makes me remember of um, this person called Esther. Esther called on a fast, three days without drink and without food. The Bible tells us that they were supposed to be destroyed by the wicked Haman, but they were exalted. Instead of they being slaves, they came into a higher level and the people respected them. The Bible says that the fear of the Jews came upon all the people. Now, this is what I will tell us today, that for us to be exalted, for us to be in a place of peace, for us to be in a place of safety, then we have to seek the Lord. Seek Him in fasting, seek Him in prayers. Amen? And the Lord is going to do a wonderful thing in our lives. Amen? Amen. Now, 
the Apostle Paul um, gives us another tip in the book of 2 Corinthians 8, verse 12. 2 Corinthians 8, 12. Let me start from 10 so that you can get what he's talking about. 2 Corinthians 8 and 10. It says, And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you. It is so important. That's why he's sharing this uh, with his listeners. He says, Who have begun therefore not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now he goes on and says, now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness. Amen? Amen. The Bible says readiness to will. Amen? Amen? So there may be a performance also out, also out of that which you have. He's talking about their possession. Now in 12 it goes on and says, For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has and not according to what he has not amen now this is a scenario where people are giving for the welfare of other christians but paul says and he gives them an advice he says that the first thing that you should do is to have a willing mind yeah it's not it is he's not talking about the finance first he is talking about you be, being willing to do it he's, he calls it a ready mind now that is a, a type of mind that God wants, that God uses to bring us to safety. Now for us to be at peace, for us to be in a safe place, the writer of Corinthians says that we should be ready to give. Amen? Now giving is another tool for safety. Amen? The Bible says that your righteousness and do us for now the righteousness is the substance, what you have um, in your account or in your saving. That is called, in Bible terms, he calls it righteousness. He says that your righteousness will endure forever. Now that is the best way to stay in peace, financial peace that is, financial safety. How do you do that? By giving. Now he's not talking about the amount itself, but he says that for you to give, first you must be willing. You must have a willing mind. That's why the Bible says somewhere that you have to give willingly. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. So we should not be coerced to give, but it should come from our hearts. Amen? There's this one day that the Lord Jesus was in a temple and he was, he went to where the treasury was and he was looking at how people were contributing. And there was this woman who gave two mites. Now, it wasn't a big amount, but he gave it from her heart. Amen? Amen? He gave it from a willing mind, and the Lord saw the mind. My Bible tells me that the Lord searches the heart, and he tries the mind. So he tried the mind of the woman, and he saw that it was willing. Now, that is what God wants from us. He wants a willing mind. He wants a willing heart, so that he can exalt you, so that he can bring you to a place of safety in any area of a life. Now, as they gave, then the Bible tells us that we are given back. And the people of Corinthians, as they were people who are very ready to give, now history tell us, tells us that they were business persons. They would engage in business. More of them were business people. Where Paul met some people like Priscilla and Aquila and the others. These were, very, these were business people. Now, they knew the secret. Now, I would advise us today, even as the Apostle Paul advises his listeners, that for you to prosper, let's say in your business, then you have to be willing. For you to experience that financial safety, that financial peace, then you must be ready to give. You must be ready to contribute to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us that seek first the kingdom. Amen? 
they that seek for the righteous cause of the kingdom through giving. The Bible tells us that they are going to dwell in that safety. Amen? Amen. So your safety will come depending on how ready you are to give. Now giving has many forms. Not just giving financially, but you can give your time. You can give your prayer. You can give many things to us. You can give your advice. But that's, that does not disqualify financial giving. Financial giving is part of it. But you can give in very many forms. So no one has an excuse not to give. So we don't have any excuse not to be in a place of safety. Amen? Amen. And that is what my prayer is for us today. That we dwell in that place. That place of safety. Because God wants to bless us. It is very clear in scripture. In the Bible, it says, in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, it says that it is he who gives us power to get wealth. So the power to get wealth comes from the Father in heaven. And it is his desire to bless his children. I don't know a situation where you are a parent and you, you would want your children to stay in love. So God wants us to prosper. He wants us to be in a place of safety. Now for us to be in that place of safety, we must obey that word. We must obey that commandment. The commandment of giving. Amen? Amen. Now, there's another thing for us to stay in a place of safety. It is recognizing authority. Amen? Authority has many forms, the physical authority and the spiritual authority. Now, the physical authority is talking of um, our bosses at work, um, our leaders, our presidents. Now, the spiritual authority talks of the pastor uh, or anyone that is above you, spiritually speaking. Now, that is a form of authority. Our parents are also a form of authority. Now, for us to be in a place of safety, we have to recognize authority. Amen? Now, Peter tells us this way in 1 Peter 5 and 2. 1 Peter 5 and 2. Now he advises both divides, the leadership and the subjects. The Apostle Peter says, in 1 Peter 5 and 2, he says, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. You can notice he, he stresses on that word willingly. God loves it when you're doing it willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Amen? So we see the connection between humility, the authority, and that peace. Amen? Amen. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being an example of the flock. Amen? Amen. Now, verse 4 goes on and says, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Now, he gives us another criteria of being in a place of safety. But now, this is not on the physical uh, perspective, but on the spiritual side. It says that for you to be in that place of safety, to be with the Lord himself, he says that we must, um, as the authority, we must feed the flock of God. Feed them with what? Feed them with knowledge. Feed them with wisdom. Amen? Give them the word of God. Raw, even as how it comes from heaven. Now he says that you do not do it um, with constraint. Amen? Amen. He goes on and says, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and gives grace. To the humble. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we see how humility plays a very big role in our safety in life. 
we all want peace. Um, humanity has in, uh, invested so much in peace, not knowing where the peace should come from. Peace is through that humility, but it comes from Jesus Christ himself. So without Jesus Christ, there is no peace. Forget about it. Forget about safety. Safety from what? From the wrath of God. From the judgments of God. So, there is another... That is what the Bible tells us. That Christ is the Prince of Peace. Now, without the Prince of Peace, then we cannot have peace. Now, that the peace that the Bible is talking about is not um, the external peace. The external peace is good. It comes once in a while. But we are talking about the internal peace. The peace in your heart, the peace in your mind, and the peace in your soul. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is that peace. So without him, without us receiving Christ, without him, without us giving him that preeminence in our lives, then peace cannot come. There cannot be safety. We cannot speak that language when we omit the giver of it. And the giver of it is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He tells us somewhere in Matthew 11 and verse 28, it says that, Come unto me, all you who are laden, and I will give you rest. Amen? Amen. Now, he calls it in, the, in that particular part, it, he calls it rest. Amen? Amen? That peace, that shalom, that safety. Now, in the world, it, it, there is trouble, yeah? But God calls us to him. He calls us to a place of safety, the safety that is in him. He says that we will experience trouble, yes, in the world. That is, there, that is biblical. But he says that in him, we are going to experience that peace. That shalom will be experienced in our lives. Amen? And that is what I would advise each and every one, every one of us, that we let Christ have the preeminence in our lives. In everything that we do, just involve him. And we will experience the peace that the Bible is talking about. Praise God. Amen. Now, there's another thing which would help us experience peace, and that is doing good. Good is doing what is right. Amen? Amen. Now, the Bible calls it knowing God. Now, no one can claim that he or she knows God when he or she is not doing the right thing. Now, doing a wrong thing is lack of knowledge of God. Amen? And doing the right thing is that knowledge of God. And through that knowledge of God comes that safety, comes that peace. Amen? Now, let me refer back to Peter. Peter says something interesting. In Second Peter, chapter one. Let me start from verse one, so that we can know what he's talking about. Um, it says, "Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, which is through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ." Verse two says, "Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ." Our Lord. Amen? Amen. Now notice how grace and peace is tied to the knowledge of God and to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now what does it mean to know God? I've given us one tip. Doing the right thing is knowing God. Doing the wrong thing is lack of that knowledge. Amen? That is one aspect of knowledge of God. Now what does it mean to know the Lord? Now one aspect of the knowledge of Jesus Christ is knowing who he is. Amen? He is the Messiah. That is one part of knowledge. Now, through that, knowing that, through what Jesus Christ did on the cross, now your sins have been washed away. That will give you peace. 
Amen. You will feel, you will be in a safe place with him, knowing that Jesus Christ died for you. So you must know Christ. You must know what he has done for you. Amen. Amen. Now, that knowledge has many aspects. It has um, about three aspects. We have one knowledge, the knowledge that brings us to Christ. Amen. It is through revelation. Amen. Like the thief on the cross, he knew that the person on his side was not just a man. He knew that he was truly the son of God. That is the first type of knowledge I'm talking about. The knowledge that brings us to Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, there is another knowledge. Being in Christ. When, immediately when you're in Christ, then there's another type of knowledge. Yeah? And Paul talks about this in, in Philippians. He says that you have not so known Christ. Now, what does it mean to know Christ? The Bible tells us in uh, Philippians 2, he says that we should have the mind of Christ. Now, how is that mind? The mind that looks for the benefit of others. Amen? Amen. Now, for you to experience peace in your life, consider others better than yourself. You will be at peace. Now, some people, or let me say many of us, experience lack of peace because we are too concerned with ourselves. We look to ourselves much than we look unto others. We are more into bringing into our side than giving. So peace is not in taking, but peace is in giving. Amen? So if the Father in heaven gave you his son, and the Bible says that when the angels sang, they say peace towards men. Amen? So it means that that peace is something that is being given. It is something that comes from a source, and it, it is towards someone. So for you to experience that peace as a child of God, you must give. Amen? Amen. You must look for the benefit of another person. Encourage someone. Exhort them. Build them up. When they are going through a tough situation, encourage them. Amen? Pray for them. So as you give, you attract the peace that I'm talking about. That is now the peace that is in Christ. Amen? Within the body of Christ. Amen? Now, there's another peace. There's another knowledge, sorry. The knowledge which is the end result of our life or our walk in Christ. Amen? That is the third facet of the word knowledge. So, as we look at that word knowledge, we should look at it on those three three facets. The knowledge that brings us to Christ or the knowledge that reveals us, reveals Christ to us. And the knowledge in Christ, which is in knowing or behaving the same way Christ behaved. That is knowledge. Now, there is another thing, the knowledge, which is as a, is as a result. Um, for that, to be clear, you will allow me to read um, 2 Peter 1 and 3. Up to up to verse 8. It will bring that clear to us. The Bible says um, in verse 3, it says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Amen. Amen. Now who is that? That is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now verse 4 goes on and says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to faith knowledge. Amen? Now we come to the second part of knowledge, the knowledge in Christ. Another, uh, that knowledge would mean knowing how to divide scripture. Amen? That is another part of knowledge. Now, knowing what a, part, a particular scripture means will give you peace in your heart. Amen? Let's say you are experiencing grief in your life and you know of a particular scripture that talks exactly of that situation that you're going through. Now, for you to apply it rightfully, that is called knowledge. And that will um, attract peace in your life. Amen. It goes on and says, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. 
For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That is now a result of that knowledge, the second knowledge we were talking about. Now the third knowledge comes. It is called bearing fruit, showing us the fruit. That is love, peace, kindness. That is another knowledge. The Bible, um, the writer of uh, Second Peter tells us that if you lack these things, then you are unfruitful. Now you don't know Christ. Now that speaks to us as the children of God. If we do not display the fruits of the Holy Spirit, then we do not know who we are talking about. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, through that knowledge of Christ, then peace is released into our lives. As the writer of Peter tells us, that it, it attracts both grace and peace into our lives. Amen? Amen. So as I touched on earlier, on uh, the armor of God in Ephesians 6, now we have another armor. It says, um, Ephesians 6, uh, let me start reading from 13. It says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Amen? Amen. We remember that we should call upon the name of God for us to stand. We should depend upon the grace of God for us to stand. He says that therefore be strong in the power of his might, not on our might, but on his might. That is now the power of grace being released into your lives. Amen. Amen. He says, stand therefore having your loins got about with the truth and putting on or having on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Now that righteousness, as I've talked about, is doing good. Amen? Amen. He talks about it in two ways. Now righteousness means uh, two things. Doing good to uh, your brother, that is righteousness. And another righteousness is believing in Christ. That is called righteousness. So the, um, the right of Ephesians tells us that having on that grace split. Now John tells us that if we love our brother, if we love the brethren, then we convince ourselves Amen? So that at his appearing you will not feel ashamed. Amen? So it protects your heart. Amen? Amen. So if we put on that breastplate, that is um, the breastplate of righteousness, which we all know that it is love, love of the brother, and believing in Christ, believing on the promises of God, then it protects us. Now if you're protected, then you're saved. And if you're saved, then you're going to be at peace. Amen? It goes on and says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen? So, if you are ready, now it comes back again to the mind thing. It says, with the preparation of the gospel of peace, be ready to preach peace. Now, how do we preach that peace? By walking it. Amen? The Bible says that your feet, it is on our walk, how you behave, how you decide, how people see you in uh, solving your problems. We, you must be ready. The Bible tells us somewhere that pursue peace. Amen? How do we pursue it? We use our feet. Amen? In our daily walk, in our daily lives, we pursue this gospel, and that gospel is peace. Amen? Amen. We have said that there is no peace without Christ, who is the giver. So as we pursue peace, the Bible is very clear on that. It says, with all men. Amen? Possibly with all men. Yes, it might appear difficult. You cannot be at peace with everyone because there are some people who will not understand you. The moment you pursue that peace, the moment they feel threatened. So they would back off. But the Bible encourages that, that, that we should continue going on. Pursue it. Amen? Because in that peace is our safety. Amen? Now, there's another place which we can get peace, and that is the Word of God. So, as you stand on the Word of God, make it your foundation, then you'll be saved. Amen? Amen. Jesus gives us a parable of the person who built on a rock and the other person who built on sand. So, the Bible encourages us that 
we should build on that rock, and that, that rock is the word of God. Amen? Amen? So that word of God is our place of safety. Now, how do we make that word our place of safety? By us speaking it. The Bible calls it confession. You confess it, you release it into the atmosphere. Amen? Amen. First, you believe it. Amen? Then you speak it. Amen? Yeah. Paul says that we believe, that's why we say it. Amen? The first thing you do, believe that word, then release it. Amen? Amen? Then as you release it, practice it. Comes again to the feet. We practice that word. Then we release peace into our lives. Amen? Amen? And the peace of God will continue moving on with us. Now, are you going through a tough situation? Many of us do in any, um, in a particular area of your life. Maybe you're not going through a tough situation in your health. Maybe you're going through in your relationship. Now, where do we get safety in such a situation? By committing all our cares to God. Amen? Amen. Now, committing all things, it's a matter of giving. Taking everything. Now, if you have a problem and you give it to another person, you will not experience the weight again. Amen? Now you will stay in peace. Amen? So, we should not be um, in a situation where we give God the peace. Let's say someone has done you wrong. And uh, you say, or you claim, let me use that word, you claim that you've given it unto God, and then you're complaining. It means you gave it, and then you took it. That's why you're not at peace. That's why you're grumbling. Or that's why you're complaining. So I would advise us today, or encourage us strongly, that we should, co we should practice committing things to God. That is where our peace will come from. When someone does you wrong, committing it to God is through forgiveness. You forgive and let go. Then it releases peace into your life. Amen? Amen. So, Pastor uh, touched on something that I wanted to mention. And that is called prayer. Prayer releases peace in our lives. Prayer is the place of safety. Amen? Now, Psalms, the writer of Psalms, the King David, says that they that dwell in the secret place. Now, which is that secret place? The place of prayer. It is the place of safety. It's in our Psalm 91, in verse 1. I'd like us to go there. I to pass. So important. Psalm 91. And verse 1. Psalm 91 and 1 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Amen? Now, that is the first place. Um, there's something so interesting about that, that, that verse. He says he will deliver you from the, fowl, the snare of the fowler. From any trap that someone has put against you. Now, rely on the safe place. Be in that secret place. Be at peace. And now you um, attract God. You release uh, what you're going through even to God. You release your battles to God. The Bible says that the battle does not belong to us. It belongs to Him. Now in such a situation, you're going to be at peace within yourself. And He says that He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Anything that is meant to strike you in life, which will not prosper when you're in a place of prayer. Being in the secret place of the Most High. Amen? Amen? Now, when the Lord was teaching us how to pray, He says that lock yourself in a room and pray to your Father who is in secret. Amen? Now, for us to access the God who is in secret, we must be in a secret place ourselves. Amen? Amen? So, that secret place is a place of prayer. Engage in prayer. Multiply in prayer. 
and we're going to experience that peace. Now, this is the peace now around us, within first and then around us. He goes on and says, he shall cover you with his feathers. Now, that is a safe place. You can bear with me witness that that is a safe place to be, under the wings of the Almighty God. When Jesus Christ protects you himself, he says that, he cries unto the inhabitants of Jerusalem, he says that how he would be like a hen that covers its cheeks. Amen? Amen. A hen uses its feathers. Now for us to be in the feathers of Jesus Christ, we have to be in a place of prayer. We have to be in a secret place. Goes on and says, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Amen? Now that takes us back to the the armor of God. It is made effective through prayer. It does not work alone. It works with prayer. Prayer activates it. it our prayer activates the armor of God so that it can work for our benefit. Amen? Amen. It goes on and says, You shall not be afraid of the terror, but, um, the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Goes on and says, A thousand shall fall by your side, or at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold, and see the reward of the wicked. Now these are the people who have talked about, the people that do evil. Now, Psalm 91 sums all that I've talked about. Says, they shall fall at your side and at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Now, as we, the children of God, are being rewarded peace and safety, the wicked are being rewarded turmoil and pestilence. Amen? Amen. So, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, that is the name of Christ, even the Most High, your habitation, that is through prayer. There shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his wings, his angels, charge over you. You can imagine a situation where angels are covering you. That is a safe place. Amen? Amen. So, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in your ways. Now your ways always talks about your thoughts. The Bible says, your ways are not my ways, and your thoughts are not my thoughts. Now, your ways is how, how you move in your mind. Yeah? Your perspective, how you view things, how you believe, talks about your ways. So he goes on and says, they shall bear you up in their wings, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Amen? Amen. So, as we put these things at bay, the Bible calls it the lion. These are the spiritual enemies. As we put them at bay, God puts it somewhere that, that the God of peace will subdue Satan under your feet. Amen? The Bible calls him the God of peace. Now, how do you enter into that, into that covenant of peace which he talks about? You must be at peace yourself. So, as you be at peace yourself, God puts your enemies under your feet. In short, he fights for you. Amen? You rest, even as he told um, the Lord Jesus, that sit at the right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Now rest in a place of trust. Rest in a place of prayer. Rest in a place of giving. Amen? Rest in a place of always reciting what God has done for you. And the living God is going to fight for us. It goes on and says, Because he has set his love upon me. Amen? Amen. His love upon me. How do you love God? The Bible says that I has not seen, nor ear heard, what the Lord has prepared for they that love him. In another, in another version it says, for they that wait upon him. 
So waiting upon God, which I've talked about, which is called fasting. Um, David calls it loving God. So as you wait upon God, then you are loving him. And this is the promise for they that love him. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Now deliverance becomes your song. I will set him on high. Praise God. Amen. We are talking about exhortation. Promotion. It comes through loving God. And that is called seeking God through fasting. Because he has known my name. God then says, he shall call upon me. Now talking about prayer. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Amen. Amen. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, how many would like to be in a place of safety? Like I've mentioned. Now, obedience is the key. Amen. Amen. Obedience is the key that unlocks the promises of God. Even as you've been told in Deuteronomy 28 and 1, it says that if they diligently obey, amen, not just obey, but diligently obey Him, consistently obeying Him, it unlocks the peace of God in your life. Peace in your mind, peace in your heart, peace in your body, in your situation, in your relationship, in everything that involves you. Now, the writer of Isaiah in 26 and verse 3 says that you will keep Him in perfect peace. Amen? That shalom, shalom. He says you are going to be peace in all areas of your life. You can imagine that. Perfect peace. In your mind, in your heart, in your soul, in your children, there is peace. But it goes on and says, for they whose heart is perfect towards him. They that trust God. Trusting God releases the peace of God in your life. It releases the peace of God in our mind. And you are going to be in a very, very safe place. Praise God. Amen. Now, there's another thing which I would like to talk about shortly. It is called edification. Now, when we talk about that term, now, edification is a construction term um, which the builders use. Now, when you are um, erecting a building, when you are bringing it from, um, from the ground, that, that is called edification. You are putting a stone above a stone. That is called edification. Now, when we are talking in biblical terms, the word edification talks um, the person who talks about this is the, um, the Apostle Paul. He says that um, he says that when someone prays in tongue, he is edified. Amen? Amen. Now, when you are going through a situation and you go into praying in tongues, how does it feel to you uh, or in your spirit? It brings peace. Amen. So, as you pray in tongues, it releases peace in you. So, that is another tool for you to stay in safety. Pray in tongues. That is now specific. Not just prayer, because prayer involves all. Now, prayer in tongues releases that edification. It builds you up as a person. This is now an individual thing. It builds you up as a person. And you're going to stay at peace. When you are going through a situation that is uh, pushy, then engage in prayer of tongues. Amen? Amen. It says um, somewhere in uh, Acts 9, Acts chapter 9 and verse 31, it says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea, and in Galilee, and in Samaria, and were edified. They were built. Amen? Amen. And walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, staying in that place of comfort, that place of safety, amen? That place of edification, that place of peace, the Bible says being in that comfort. So, it is not just um, one way thing, it is, it, is, it is in many ways, it says that in the fear of the Lord, 
That is one. Walking in that fear. As you walk in the fear of God, it releases peace. Amen? Amen. And as you be in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, as I've, I've mentioned, praying in tongues, then it releases that peace in your life. Amen? He goes on and says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Amen? Amen? So, if you want to stay at peace, now, and for those who do not have the gift, then you are free because the Bible says that we should desire the best gifts. Amen? And the gift of tongues is best. I can assure you it is best. It leads to edification, self-edification. And it builds you up as a person. Amen? Amen. Now, now there's something again. The voice of God. As I've mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Now the voice of God, listening to that voice, releases peace in your life. Now if you're on a lookout, maybe you're on a lookout for a job. And you can recognize the voice of God. It will give you peace. Now by peace I mean prosperity. Amen? You will get that job. So it will release that peace in your life. So as you listen to the instructions, now the voice of God is the instructions, His commandments. Now we are going to experience that peace in our life or in everything that we do. Amen. So we should always seek for the voice of God. Always seek for the voice of God. Always endeavor to increase and to multiply in the knowledge of the voice of God. Amen. And the Lord will bless us all. Amen. Amen. So we are going to stand up for um, a few minutes and you are going to engage in some prayer, about one or two minutes, and then you are going to move on. Praise the Lord. Amen.